This is our 1998 Toyota Tacoma, which is highly modified for rock crawling. Now the design concept with the build on this truck, which took about two years to complete, was to create a truck that was simple Toyota reliability that could drive on the highway long distances, kind of more or less overland style, and we could camp out of it in relative comfort. And that's is what we came up with. And we'll take a full walkthrough on this truck and let's go ahead and start with the front of the truck. So on the front, you can see it has a little bit of protection. This is a All Pro Apex steel bumper and they originally kind of designed it to be universal with the newer model trucks as well as the older ones. And so this front top plate was kind of cut out strange. So we actually welded it in and recreated this top plate. So if you want to take a look at that, it fits a lot nicer to the truck body than what it did from Apex or from All Pro. Now All Pro's bumper is probably one of the nicest looking steel bumpers in my opinion for these trucks. It's really high clearance but also has a really nice factory finish to it. I just love plate bumpers up front especially just to give a truck a more OE style appearance rather than a tube bumper. And then inside for recovery we have a Smitty Built 10,000 pound XO2 which is their waterproof wireless winch with synthetic rope and added this nice thimble for uh, recovery so it has no hook. It works a lot better and a little bit more safe and then it's got a Haas uh, fairly here in the front. So that's the bumper. Uh, these driving lights uh, put in, they're brand new uh, but never been used. They're not wired up yet. The turn signals are LED turn signals. So one thing to note on it is that it flashes quick on the turn signal because it doesn't have enough resistance on it. So if you wanted to have it be a standard, you know, blinker speed, you'd have to add another lighter or maybe wire in a, a, a light here for the turn signal as well. All lights work on the truck, which is great. Um, on the exterior, you can see it is a Monster Liner full paint job. So Monster Liner is different than Bed Liner not anywhere near the same stuff. So this is, first of all, it's UV stable, so it doesn't fade or discolor when it's left out in the, the sunlight. It also is textured, but it's a smooth texture, so it's actually easy to clean. The bed liner stuff gets dirt trapped in it, and it's almost impossible to get it clean. Um, it makes it really easy to maintain because you never have to wax it. Uh, it pretty much is almost invincible to scratches, and it almost, uh, because it's enamel style paint, it gives the panels a little bit more of a uh, robust feeling. So they're less tinny, you know, how Toyota stuff kind of tends to be. So that's the exterior of it. Uh, the, the lights on here are uh, upgraded uh, Silver Star Ultra lights. So they're, they're actually real, relatively bright. Um, all the lights work on it. The taillights, headlights, reverse lights, all the blinkers, everything works great on it still. Um, now underneath the front, you'll see the biggest change we've made, which is the solid front axle. So the plate, the frame has been plated on both sides, um, basically from the front spring hanger forward or the rear shackle hanger forward. And the, it was also reinforced for the steering gearbox and you can see we've got uh, bump stop drops here for the bump stops to make contact with. These are not the cheapy junk bump stops that you see on a lot of builds. These, uh, I think they're called super bumps, but they will compress about 50% um, of the height, if not a little bit more. So even though it looks like it doesn't have a lot of compression travel, it'll go almost all the way down. So it gives a really nice cushy compression. So it's a very, uh, uh, progressive uh, bottom out experience. It's not a real harsh, you know, hit when you when you do bottom out, um, and that's pretty nice. The Rad Flow shocks also help with that. Those are uh, 2.0 remote reservoir Rad Flow shocks, and it's got those front and rear on the truck. The uh, spring hanger mount is a low profile. It's extremely low profile to the truck frame, so you can see. Uh, this is the bottom of the truck frame. This is the top of the leaf spring. So it's about as 
uh, compact and recessed as you can go to keep that height down. So we basically wanted more spring height than uh, you know overall height from the bracketry and so forth. So it gives it a better ride and keeping those mounts for the springs up as high as possible gives it uh, less of a tippy feeling. It's more of a connected feel when you drive it. So it just handles better. Um, the front axle is a Wagoneer axle from the mid 80s. Um, so these are a Dana 44 axle. They're a lot beefier than the modern day Jeep Dana 44 axles that you'll find. Uh, the tube diameter is hugely massive. These are seriously bulk compared to the newer Dana 44s. Um, so this, the tube was cut. Um, we turned it and twisted it so it moved the pinion angle up on it. So it's almost more of like a uh, mid-high pinion style uh, differential, get that drive shaft out of the rocks. And then it was all, you know, re-welded. It was put in a jig so it's all perfectly straight. And then it was reinforced with these shock mounts. So these shock mounts reinforce the C's on the um, axle end here. So it's got, it's a double shear. So there's a plate here and a plate on the back side and the bolt goes through with the shock in the center and it's fully welded. So that gives this C massive strength, um, you know, compared to stock on these things. You can see that it's got the U-bolt flipped you know, on, on uh, both sides here. It's got the really big spring hangers. So it gives it really nice stability, helps with you know, eliminate axle wrap on it. All of this rebuild work was done in probably the last 10,000 miles. So it's really, really low usage. Pretty much all of it was, you know, brand new stuff. So it's uh, in really good shape. The uh, differential inside here has a 48 gear, which is a great gear ratio because it's really strong for a Dana 44. Uh, they're very low likelihood to break one of those things because the 8.8 .8 inch ring gear and uh, If you get up to the higher ratios, you know your pinion just gets smaller and smaller and you're more likely to break something with that 48 is a great compromise with that and it's got an ARB air locker in it uh, It's got this really uh, beefy uh, front diff cover from rough stuff on it It's got a fill and a drain port, which is great. So you don't have to pull it off every time you want to change the fluid in it. Um, the axle shafts are RCV uh, chromoly axle shafts, which are guaranteed up to a 40 inch tire lifetime warranty. So it also has the worn hubs and it has the chromoly RCV hub gears in there. So it's pretty much invincible as far as an axle goes. And the weak link with this thing is the tires because we're only running 37 inch KO2 tires, which measure about 36. So I always like having the weak link being the tires. Um, people say, oh, I want the weak link to be the hubs or the you know axles or whatever. That sucks. I mean, if you're out on the trail, you don't want to be crawling underneath the thing, having to pull apart the whole deal. Um, when the weak spot is your tires, they'll break free. They'll you know come off the, whatever before anything else breaks. And that's been totally the case with the stuff we've run it through. And it's just invincible, it just works. It's just a joy to drive. Um, the RCV axles also don't really seem to bind up like the way you joints do, because it's more of like a burr field where you can have the axle at full turn and be giving it power and have it fully locked up. It doesn't even phase it. It's just very smooth power delivery. Uh, those are amazing. You can run them on the highway. And so if you want to run it um, in four wheel drive while you drive up to the mountain and ski slope or whatever, you can do that. Uh, basically, they say you should uh, lube them every uh, oil change or so. And it's pretty simple to do that. We'll provide a grease gun for that. Um, the steering on this thing is amazing. It's high steer. It's got all one ton uh, joints at the ends. and it's got a PSC steering ram, so it's hydraulic assist, which is a full PSC system. So it has their PSC pump and reservoir and all the goodies. And this is amazing because you can turn the truck with ease no matter what. So if you're out on the rocks, you can have the air locker on, you can be up against rocks with this thing, and it's basically one finger turning. It is 
an absolute joy and makes uh, rock crawling with this thing just easy as can be. Um, it's fantastic. It also relieves a lot of the stress on the steering gearbox because the steering gearbox is really not taking much of the load for steering. So it's really nice. And also, if there was any potential for bump steer or anything like that, it completely eliminates it uh, because it, it basically acts as steering damper at the same time. This truck doesn't really have bump steer because the uh, geometry on it is very, very, very low. So you can see the angles are extremely low with the drag link and tie rod. Um, so it's super nice. The pitman arm is a flat pitman arm. And so it's just this, the dynamics on it are really good. Um, all of this was set up so it, it doesn't make contact with um, any of the components, even at full compression. You can fully flex it out and you can turn the wheel fully side to side, not rub. It's awesome. Uh, most of these trucks, when people build them, they don't dial them in, so it sucks. You're rubbing and pulling off your fenders when you're flexed out and you're trying to drive through an obstacle. So that's not the case with these. Uh, the springs are a uh, four inch uh, spring that was done by Sky Manufacturing, Sky Off-Road in Oregon. Um, they're a pretty nice spring. Um, chose leaf springs specifically just for the simplicity and reliability. So I know we debated doing uh, three link and so forth on this thing, but at the end of the day, leaf springs are just simple and super proven and they're just easy to live with, easy to maintain and cheap if you ever have to replace them. So they're fantastic with that. Um, so front, otherwise the brakes are just Wagoneer brakes. Um, they, they work really well. It's still running the, the uh, Toyota Master cylinder. So the, uh, because the brake calipers are so much larger, you know, you have a lot more pedal throw uh, for braking on the thing. So if you wanted to shorten that up, you could put a different Master cylinder that just had a little bit more volume in it, but it works perfectly fine. It'll hold on the steepest, craziest obstacles and it has no problem on road for uh, getting it stopped. Um, oh, one other thing I've seen here on the front bumper, it does have recovery points up here as well. Um, one thing I do like with this bumper too is that it's got these reinforcement uh, plates underneath the winch. So the winch mounts, it keeps this uh, winch from uh, twisting the bottom plate on this thing. So uh, last thing on the front differential is it's got air uh, diff breather, you know, that's extended up. And that's about it for this. So let's go ahead and kind of walk around the side here on this truck. So the wheels on this thing are SCS F5 alloy 17 inch, uh, 17 by eight inch wheels. And they are fantastic because they kind of have the retro kind of style with them, but they are also fairly lightweight and they're super durable. We've uh, put them up on rocks and there's plenty of scratches to prove that and we've painted them after every trip basically to kind of keep it looking nice. Uh, you can see here's the worn hubs here. Um, there's also black uh, keyed lugs for all of the wheels. And then they're wrapped in the BFG KO2 37125 tire. And these are three peak snowflake rated so you can run them in the snow on mountain passes and not have to chain up almost all the time as far as road conditions go, which is fantastic. They're also fantastic on road. They just track well, they're quiet, but they're awesome off-road. You know, I've run eight, 10 different types of tires, manufacturers and brands and so forth, and it's hard to beat these tires. You know, even in the mud, you know, you'll just need a little bit more wheel speed, but you know, they work really well. I haven't had any experience where they were you know, not able to go over something. And I've four wheeled with a lot of guys that are running MTRs and a bunch of other tires. And, and there's nowhere that this, that they've been able to go that this can't go, you know, in the mud or clay or any of it. Um, they're fantastic tires. So I think they're just very low compromise for, uh, you know, what you get. And the little gain that a MT might have in the mud is just so little that it's not worth the, all the disadvantages that it has. Um, so you see, coming around here, we've got the fender flares. These were super hard to uh, find because this was just a base truck. It didn't have flares. So we ended up driving, I think, two hours to go find these things after searching for them for, for
forever found a guy that was carting out one of these trucks and then we painted it black to just kind of give it a nice contrast so it's got monster liner on it as well um, coming down the side here you can see it's got the tinted windows it's got fully manual mirrors they fold in which is kind of nice all the seals are in great shape on this thing because it's basically been garaged its whole life and uh, yeah it really goes outside so it's kind of our garage princess rock crawler um, the rock sliders are full DOM tubing. You can see they're very beefy and uh, they've been tested. There's plenty of gouges in the steel, but uh, it looks good, still painted up. The top plate is a removable top plate and it's got some speed holes punched in it and uh, really nice. Um, now it should be noted, all of the fabric uh, work on this truck was done by 1.7. Uh, the 17 shop, uh, Derek owns it. He's up in Oregon. Um, if you want fab work done or anywhere in the Northwest, he is fantastic. Probably the best welder I've ever seen and a uh, fabulous uh, um, fabricator. So um, feel free to message me if you want his contact information. Um, so he did all of the fab work on this truck. So pretty much we just had it in his shop and did all the axle stuff, all the welding, all the fabrication was done up there and uh, whatnot. So really, really nice uh, build. It's not booger welded or um, improperly done. He's built tons of stuff from tube chassis to full on crazy rock crawlers. This is probably his most tame thing he's ever worked on. So uh, down underneath here, if we take a look, we can see the uh, front drive line. It's a long spline. It's a long travel drive line. We just had it uh, rebuilt by six states. It's got a front CV and you can see it's got a perfect pinion angle to the differential and it's super low angle and the whole concept with it is to be able to run it at normal highway speeds and not have an issue. So most of these solid axle swap trucks, they'll just run U-joint front and back, and you'll be lucky to go over 25 miles an hour without the thing vibrating like crazy and you wishing you didn't have a solid axle truck. So this thing can run at highway speeds, which is awesome. So if you wanna leave the hubs locked in, you can shift in and out of four wheel drive as you're cruising down the highway. Um, you can see here, this was a pretty massive undertaking was the um, recessed uh, shackle hanger. So this is a Frenched in um, hanger design that was done by Sky Offroad. And so it's quite elaborate to try to get the placing just right. And you basically are cutting out the frame, re-welding in this entire bracketry. And the whole concept is that you move the shackle pivot from down here where it would typically be with a, mount, a weld on, um, shackle mount all the way up here so you're gaining about four inches of um of shackle height recessed into the frame so it not only gives you a lower center of gravity but the uh, ability to um, handle better and then you can have a longer shackle so you get better wheel trap and less binding and then you can run a slightly more arch spring so it just it just drives way better um, with it. It's fantastic. It's a good way to keep the overall height of it pretty low to the ground for You know what it is, you know as far as the truck goes um, I think this truck is the perfect height for a rock crawler truck because you, you actually need it off the ground a certain amount if you want to run the really hard obstacles on You know the Rubicon Trail, you know run Soup Bowl, run uh, the old sluice stuff like that you're gonna need a certain amount of height, a certain amount of frame height, so you're not just dragging the thing all the time. Um, this thing is what I would consider perfect because you can basically drive over anything. And it's not excessively high, but it's high enough. And um, you can see it's uh, really clean underneath here. The, um, the sliders are fully uh, plated against the frame. There's also these nice gussets that are in here for every mount. Um, here is the mounts for, or the skid plate for the transfer cases. So it's a dual transfer case with the front case being a Marlin Crawler 4.7 case and the rear case being a stock 2.57 chain drive case. And um, so this skid plate, 
but a front range. It's fantastic. It's beefy as all heck. And uh, we've got it all set up so it doesn't rub on the transfer case. No vibrations, no weird stuff. And then it's got the front range rear cross member um, mount for the transfer case, which is fantastic because all the other mounts, and I've run them all over the years with to different Toyota trucks with dual transfer cases. And the thing is, you load the thing and your your sticks inside for your shifters and all that are gonna just be flopping all over the place. And I've broken motor mounts, I've broken all sorts of stuff over the years on different trucks. This fixes all that. Uh, it's fantastic, because you basically don't have any drivetrain movement at all. Um, so because you're not getting the transfer case movement, you're not gonna be torquing on your motor mounts. So you just eliminate all the problems with it. It's been awesome. It's a lot of work to dial it in though because you have to properly clearance up against the body, you get the thing properly set, and you know, kind of move stuff around so you're just not getting the vibrations in through the cab. But we've uh, redone it I think twice now, and it's perfect. It works really well. And uh, it's, it's super nice uh, because you're not getting all that vibration, but you have all the upside advantages with that design. So coming back a little further, we've got, and the rear drive line was just rebuilt a few thousand miles ago by six states. It has all new joints, it has a super heavy duty carrier bearing. Uh, we did do some carrier bearing adjustments on it that were all welded in with some new bracketry and trying to get it dialed in. So now it can cruise on the highway 70, 75. No problems, no vibrations, nothing. And you can see the pinion angle is perfect. So it's a rear CV driveline, and you can see the output from the uh, third member is perfectly in line with the rear. Well, not perfectly, it's about a degree off, which is ideal. And that works out really, really well. So it gives you a really good clearance and keeps your drive line out of the rocks, which is essential if you like to drive home. So the other thing to note is the exhaust is all tucked up pretty high. It's just about frame height, kind of going all the way back there, um, just slightly under. And uh, yeah, not a lot to get caught up on. The gas tank um, skid is, is uh, in really good shape. It's nice and high. And uh, I actually did replace the tank because the old tank was dented. So we uh, dropped it a year ago, I think, and put a new fuel pump, the high pressure um, fuel pump for the supercharger and all that fun stuff in there. So um, one of the things that's really great with this truck is the height. So I mentioned the frame height is ideal in my opinion, and it measures right about 26 and a half inches off of the ground, which is really good. Um, one of the things that makes the Tacoma kind of an ideal rock crawler conversion rig is that the body height is really short. So even with a 26 and a half inch frame height, the overall cab height is only six foot six inches, which is really, really not tall. So your center of gravity, even with all this clearance, isn't crazy tippy. So it's amazing even watching you know jail wranglers and stuff like that they get it pretty tippy pretty fast because their body height's quite a bit more than this truck is. And the, the other measurements are kind of fun is that the front differential clearance from the lowest point to the ground at the bottom of the pumpkin is right at 11 inches and the rear is just shy of 13 inches, which is pretty impressive. Now that rear differential is obviously not stock. That is a diamond rear axle housing and it has the Toyota 8.4 inch third member in it. And it has 488 gears that have been cryo treated, which is a hardening process they went through, plus an ARB locker. Now, one of the things that people don't realize with the third members is a lot of people go to way big, too big of a axle and third member and all that fun stuff, in my opinion, because um, for instance, this Toyota 8 inch or 8.4, it's a fantastic um, third member, especially with a 48 ratio. It's super strong. You're not going to ever run into a problem with this size of tire without just being super dumb. Um, one of the things that helps a lot for that third member though is this axle housing from uh, 
um, diamond because what they do is that flange that mounts to that third member is quarter inch plate steel. So one of the things that those third members have a problem with the stock axle is they can tort. So that third or that axle housing can't hold that third member. So when it's under a huge load, it starts twisting. And as soon as it starts twisting, that pinion can just walk up to that gear and start chewing the thing out. So one of the things that's really nice with this is that it only it not only uh, provided more ground clearance, added massive strength, but also helped the third member have even more strength with uh, be able to not have an issue with with uh, the, these tires or you know any sort of off-road obstacle. So these are it's super conservative tires for the type of drivetrain setup. More than likely, you could probably run 40-inch tire on it and not have a problem. But you'd be probably more or less pushing the envelope on it, in my opinion. Uh, these tires, especially being that they're a pretty um, non-aggressive tire, they're just not gonna have that problem where they'll just start wheel spinning and then catch something and just bam, you know, snap everything. So um, it's a really great thing if you're going for reliability and an ability to never trailer it, to drive to all the different locations you wanna drive to and drive back home. So the, the rear has the extended diff breather as well on it. And uh, it has the same as the front, it has stainless steel braided brake lines. And this is just a rear drum brake setup. It still has the stock e-brake cables and all that stuff hooked up and uh, they still work. Um, the rear has um, custom springs. Um, they're the Chevy 63 inch springs, but we just replaced them with a brand new leaf pack. This is not a junkyard pack. This is a brand new five leaf Chevy 63 leaf pack that we put in. And you can see the front uh, spring mount here. It's a high clearance, fully welded. Um, it's got a really nice taper so it can slide up on rocks. Um, works really well. And then it's got the same bump stops as the front. We've got it properly set so you can fully stuff the tire and not rub on the body as you go through obstacles, which is really nice. And then the, uh, let's keep going around the back here. Let's keep going. Okay, and the rear tire is obviously same as the front. These two rear KO2s are brand new though. We have less than 100 miles on them. And uh, what we did is we took the spare tire, which had never been used, and we bought one new tire, and we took the tire off of this truck and we used it as a spare on the new F-250 truck project. So we ended up putting the new two tires in the rear. We put, now it has a used spare tire, and then it has the front two tires, have about 15,000 miles on them, still lots of tread. They've been working great. So that's why we have two new tires in the rear. All the wheels are matching, including the spare, and all the tires are matching, including the spare. And so as we come around here, you can see we've got this really cool decal logo on here. It, it's uh, been really great. It's adhered really well to the monster liner. It's been on there for a couple of years now, and uh, no problems even with all the washings and whatnot. Um, it has a locking gas cap, uh, which I guess is nice if somebody wants to steal your fuel, they a little harder there. Um, the rear bumper is a bolt-on bumper that Derek fabricated and the whole concept here was to protect the entire bedside so we can come off a rock hits this guy before the bedside and it's got a nice slider it hangs just down underneath the bedside so if you slide off a big rock you don't smash the bedside you hit the tube so I wanted to have a full length truck bed because then you have a functional space to use for camping and sleeping and all that fun stuff I've never seen a reason to bob these trucks. I mean, it, I think it's stupid. I, if you're gonna do that, you might as well tube the thing. Uh, I think it makes no sense. This thing has so much clearance. I've never had any obstacle whatsoever where the back overhang or the bumper has been a problem. It's rubbed before, but it's never stopped it from going over anything or coming down anything. Just not a problem. So I think bobbing these trucks is just a bad idea. That's my opinion, but I like things a little different than most people, and I like to be able to drive stuff on road and have it be practical as well. So, this bumper, you can see it has two recovery points, one on each side. We did this kind of snazzy deal. We put the license plate on a hinge with a license plate light, so it's legal, 
to protect and hide the receiver hitch. So this is a really beefy welded up receiver hitch. I've towed with it a couple times. I've towed my little two or RAV4 with it. And I think total weight was around 3,000 pounds. And it was awesome. It did really, really well. I even took it up over Sanium Pass, which is a pretty good mountain pass to pull. And it still held 55, 60 miles an hour over the whole pass in third gear. Really worked well. Um, we, underneath the backside here, you can see the, the shackle mounts here for the springs. Um, one of the things that I didn't point out on the front, but you can definitely take a look at, is getting proper shackle mounts makes a huge difference for your springs and the overall handling dynamic on these rigs. So um, you want basically a 90 degree angle from the shackle to the spring. And that's gonna give you proper compression so it swings back properly and it's not overly soft or too body rolly. It gives it the proper suspension dynamic. So um, I don't know how many trucks have seen that have you know, people go, oh, I swapped in my new leaf pack, you know, whatever. They don't set them up properly, so they ride like poop. So this is properly set up front and back, which is really nice. Um, it takes some work to dial it in because, you know, you can set it up, get all welded up, and until you get those springs broken in and you have it properly fully loaded at how you're gonna have it loaded, you're not gonna know how much those springs are compressed. So we've had to move these things at least once just to kind of get it dialed in where we wanted it. And that's what it takes when you do custom stuff. You know, it's not just a one-time done deal. You have to basically put it all together, test it, run it, see what needs to be changed, and change it. And uh, so it's really, really good now. Um, the rear shocks, you can see they're high clearance mounts. They're double shear and they are basically flush with the bottom of the axle tube. And then we have a custom crossbar here that the shocks mount to in the reservoir towers. And it also helps reinforce the frame because it's plated across there and uh, gives it a little extra strength. The exhaust is tied up nice and tight here as we go across and just has an exit right, right in front of the uh, back bumper here. Uh, these back uh, uh, bumpers also have frame reinforcement that helps that front, um, you know, with any sort of side impact. So that is helpful too. Uh, the rear differential, we did a few things to it. So uh, Diamond put in the big fill for it, so it's super easy to fill it, which is nice. Here's your uh, level check um, for it. We typically fill it just slightly over this, just because the pinions turned up just to kind of give it a little bit better lube up front with that. Um, and then the bottom we uh, cut out and welded in a drain plug because there is no drain plug when you buy these things. And uh, we put it here on the side so it's not the lowest point, but uh, it allows you to drain the uh, third member without pulling out the gears, which that's a lot of work to change your fluid. So um, that's really helpful. Um, I guess you could suck it all out otherwise, but that seems like a hassle. So that's, that's all the stuff back here, I think. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the, um, let's take a look at the truck bed area. Okay, so we have this canopy on here, and this is a high rise canopy, so it has extra height. Now this canopy, um, sits just over seven foot high. So if you're trying to park it in a garage, any eight foot door, it's gonna clear no problem, but a seven foot door, probably you're not gonna clear. Um, so it's seven two about, just under, um, for the highest point on the canopy. The cab height of the truck is six and a half foot. So if you took the canopy off, you could fit in any garage anywhere, but with this canopy, eight foot garage probably for fitment. Um, this canopy, I've pulled all the windows out, resealed them. Um, it's still, if you get a lot of water, it's gonna, it, it gets some water um, overflow through these seals. So it, it'll overflow on the inside sometimes, depending. In the back of the truck, we have the sleeping platform. And the first thing you notice is that it does have a bed liner, uh, spray and roll -in style bed liner um, in the truck. The canopy is a high rise canopy, so you get a little extra headroom even with this taller platform height. It's just under 27 inches at the front for headroom height. Of course, when you have the mattress in there, it slightly decreases it. The mattress size is 53 inches wide, and it's a folding mattress. I'll have photos of it. And the total length is actually over six foot. It's about six foot three, 
if you're fully touching the front and then the, the back glass right about. So just over six foot, which is pretty nice. This uh, platform is held down with turnbuckles, one in each corner, so it keeps the platform secured to the truck bed, so you're not gonna have it flopping around. So it holds the whole thing down and holds it forward. So to take this out, you basically spin off the turnbuckles, one in each corner. These two end pieces unscrew, and then you can either slide out the whole thing, or you can take the top off, which is just screwed down, and then take the sides out, which are all attached together. Um, this is hinged and it flips all the way open. So if you wanna use it for carrying things, we've used it flipped open to carry two mountain bikes in here with all of our camping gear and with uh, the mattress in the middle. So we put the mattress folded up in the middle, put the bikes on either side with this folded back. It worked awesome. You do have to obviously take out the mountain bikes in order to sleep in here. So that's one consideration with it. Um, we have a 17 gallon water tank here and it's held in place with a strap and then it has, we just fabricated this nice little board spacer that holds it down so it doesn't flop around while it's off-roading or extreme angles. So to get to the spare tire, you basically have to pull this uh, tank out. So loosen the strap there and then the whole tank will slide out and you have the spare tire. So the spare tire is a full size matching spare tire and wheel and it basically is held in place by the platform so it can't go anywhere. Um, it may could shift side to side just a little bit but that's about it. Um, so you can basically just slide it out straight from here. So if you did have a flat you'd have to slide out the water tank and slide out the gear you had in front of it. We just used two little bins for all of our gear. So uh, we have one bin for food supplies, one uh, for food items, and then the stove. And so that's super easy, super fast to take out of here. And then when you are camping, you just use the tailgate for your cooking surface. One thing that's really nice with this thing is you can close the lid here and it keeps bugs and whatnot out of the truck or if it's raining and you can cook right out here on the tailgate. So. It's really slick um, with this hose extended out from the tank. You can basically fill your uh, jugs or whatever you want, your cooking stuff, um, without pulling the tank out, just straight like that. So we also have some room on the sides here and we typically store the solar shower and the solar shower tent in here. And that works really well because you can hook it on the top of the um, canopy, there's those uh, mounts for the Yakima racks and you can hang it off there and set the tent up right next to it and You got a really nice way to wash off while you're out of camp um, after a long day out on some trails So basically, it's a really simple fast setup. You can basically crawl in here and be ready to go to bed in only a few minutes Of course, it's you know dry way more secure than a tent and it's a lot more stealthy we've even used it uh, while we're traveling through towns to just sleep in it overnight as we're cruising through in the city. So it's really nice because it's uh, the windows are tinted. Uh, this back glass here is actually not glass, it's plexiglass and it's uh, tinted so it works pretty well. It's a little lighter weight and uh, it's a really nice little sleeping platform area. Way better than a roof tent. I've owned several roof tents and uh, I know how all the stuff is with it. This is way lighter, uh, just a lot nicer, and it's a lot more universal. So if you wanna pull this whole thing out, you have a usable truck bed, which is really slick. The roof has Yakima roof bars, the uh, racks here, they have locks on all four of them, and they just slide on to the towers that are mounted on the top of the canopy. So if you wanna carry paddle boards or kayaks or whatever like that, you could throw them up on the roof. Let's go ahead and take a look um, at the front here. And All right, I just wanna show you real quick the front shock mounts. So these are uh, welded in hoops and they're also reinforced. But you can see how that shock mounts and uh, there's the gussets and then the reservoir mount for that. It's really clean, super nice way to mount that all up. Under the hood, let's take a look at this. So this truck only has about 62,000 miles on it. Um, so it's really low mileage. We, about probably two years ago, 
I went through and replaced anything that I would consider a possible failure point based on age on these trucks. So it wasn't really needed, it was just one of those things where it's easier to do it in the garage than out on the trail. So it has a, a new factory Toyota radiator. It has all the hoses that can be replaced were. So you're talking the upper lower radiator hose and all of the different heater hoses that run throughout the engine compartment. So anything that has coolant in it that could possibly blow and fail, I replaced. It of course has the new Toyota thermostat and gasket and a new Toyota water pump. The idler pulleys for both the serpentine and the air conditioning belt was replaced. And then the fuel filter, um, the spark plug wires, it's got newer iridium spark plugs. And uh, I think there's a few other items. I'll list it out in my maintenance log for the truck, but it's basically fully gone through as far as a maintenance standpoint. And it's crazy clean underneath. There is no oil leaking or seeping or anything out of any of the drivetrain, uh, including the transfer cases. Um, it's super dry, there's no oil buildup, super clean, it's really nice to work on. Now, this truck is the 3RZ engine, which is the 2.7 liter four cylinder, and it has every modification, I think, that you can get for it. So it has the k and full cold air intake, it has full length headers, it has the TRD supercharger, which is still running the stock three pound supercharger pulley. And I have two additional pulleys, the, I think it's the 2.4 and 2.5 super grip pulleys from URD. And that will increase it somewhere eight PSI to 10 PSI. Um, it has the 370cc um, injectors on it from URD. It's got their uh, piggyback ECU for it. Uh, basically, it's it's all set to go. It's got the AFM gauge, uh, the air fuel meter. It's got boost gauge. So really, if you wanted to ramp this thing up horsepower wise, you could easily do that. You would just have to do the appropriate tuning for it. And it has all the components in order to do that. You just would have to go through that process. So it's pretty nice. I replaced the gear oil in the nose cone of the supercharger. Uh, same time as I did all the maintenance stuff a couple years ago, probably 10,000 miles ago or so. And uh, it's a nice little setup. It's super reliable. It always starts. It never makes any weird noises. No smoke out the exhaust. Uh, the oil stays up. We changed the oil about 5,000 miles with Synthetic Mobile One. Uh, no issues with it. Super great, super reliable engine. Uh, man, these things are... It's just about bomb proof. Most guys run them 200, 300,000 miles before they're pulling them apart and rebuilding them. They're just fantastic drivetrain. Um, you also see up here is the PSC power steering um, for the Hydro Assist. So it has a full uh, PSC steering box. Now we had to custom fabricate, Derek and uh, his buddy Jim uh, custom fabricated this mounting bracket for this pump because obviously this is not a stock pump. And this is a really interesting install because this is a supercharged four cylinder. So nobody's made a bracket for this thing. So it was really cool process putting this thing together. Um, they've built lots of custom bracketry. So it was kind of fun going through that process and getting it dialed in, but it's perfect. It's so good the, the belts are perfect on it. I've been running the same belt for the last couple years and it's no weird wear or anything like that. It's fantastic, works awesome. Uh, the reservoir was also an interesting deal because it has to be located higher than the pump. So they ended up uh, fabricating this custom mount bracket um, that is bolted onto the supercharger bolts. And it's got even a little speed hole here. It's just really well done and it fits really, really good. It works awesome. I uh, had no issues with the PSC system whatsoever. The fluid level stays up on it, it doesn't leak. It works flawlessly, it's, it's awesome. Uh, we also installed a really big power steering cooler here in the front, so it keeps that fluid nice and cool if you're out on the trails and doing a bunch of turning with it. Um, 
Now, it, it does have a rebuilt uh, power steering box that is also uh, tapped and all that fun stuff too, so that's nice. The steering is actually really pretty tight, uh, especially for a solid axle truck. It's pretty nice to drive on road. So, um, we've got a battery. This is an AGM X2 power battery, which is built at the same manufacturing plant as Odyssey. It's a super great deep cycle battery. It's got, I think, what are your amp hours on this sucker? I think it's uh, around 100 maybe. It's a Group 34 or a 24F battery. Anyways, you can look it up, the specs on it. Uh, it works really well. We've used it on a couple trips to run the fridge and basically we'll be out on the trail all day and then, you know, the truck will be off all night and it's restarted every morning uh, just running off of this battery for the fridge. So it worked out pretty well. Uh, other stuff in the engine bay, it's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Most of it's all Toyota stock um, stuff. Any of the parts I put on here are all factory Toyota parts. I don't do any aftermarket stuff because it's junk. Um, the other stuff to show you on this side is it's got a relocated rate, uh, windshield washer uh, reservoir and pump. So. Um, I like everything working, so having a windshield washer is super nice. We had to remove ours because uh, there wasn't room with these larger tires and this front bumper. So that is awesome. It has the ARB air compressor, so that runs the two air lockers, and then it also has the tire air kit, so it has that connection to hook up your air hose to. Uh, these compressors freaking rock. I love them. And even with a 37 inch tire, it does a really good job. I think it's under four minutes a tire to get them up to 35 where we typically run them. Um, and typically on the trail will be down anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds. In the snow, it'll run all the way down to like five PSI. And uh, it does really, really well. So that's basically the underhood stuff. It's a super solid drivetrain and it works really well. So let's take a look at inside the truck. All right, so the inside is really clean on this truck. Even though it was a trail truck or used on the trail or whatnot, it still uh, shows you know pretty low mileage. Um, the seats are in really good shape. Um, the foam's still really good on it. It's not worn. It has these really nice husky floor liners. The carpets are uh, really good shape. There's just slight discoloration in a few spots, but they're really not worn and um, really nice. The center console, this was added to the truck because the basic trucks don't have any center console. And you can see the, um, the three different shifters here. So transmission, front transfer case, and then the stock rear transfer case. And it's got boots on them, which is pretty nice. It's got the little center console flip up lid deal. Um, the dash is in good shape. Uh, we added a stereo to it. The previous owner had a subwoofer and fancy stereo in it. So I think the door speakers are infinity, but they pulled the subwoofer from the back. And so it still has the wiring run from the engine compartment, which is I think six, uh, four or six gauge wiring run to the back in the little compartment there and it's all fused. So if you wanted to add a sub, it'd be pretty easy to do. The uh, fridge here is, uh, we just have, we just built a little mount for it out of wood. And so it's removable pretty easily. It just has three screws that hold it in on each side. And then underneath here, I wired in two 12 volt DC power outlets. So it's got two socket outlets and they're run with 10 gauge wiring. So one runs for the fridge, so it's dedicated power to the battery for the fridge that's non-switched. Um, and then the second one we use for any sort of accessories for charging batteries or whatever, and we don't have to have the truck on to do that. Um, the back is super clean, super nice. Um, it's just a nice little truck. So let's take a look at the, the driver's side real quick here. Okay, on the driver's side, you can see, once again, it's all in really good shape. Um, seat and all that fun stuff. We've got the switches for the ARB compressor. So that's uh, the compressor turn on, the rear locker, front locker, easily flip the switches. This is pretty nice having it down low like this because the light from the switches don't shine in your eyes, which is really nice. Um, put this two pillar gauge pod up here. So the lower one is the boost controller. The top one is the AFM gauge for the air fuel meter. 
And then the rest of it's pretty standard stock. I mean, this is a base truck, so there's everything's manual on it. The only feature it has on it really is air conditioning, and that uh, works really well as long as as well as the uh, heater system on it. Um, you can see the back here and the other side of the fridge, and. Uh, Yeah, all the switches, lights, everything works on it. So it's a great little driver truck. Um, I mean, this, you should know, it is a base truck. I mean, so you're talking, it has no cruise control. It has no anything else, no power features, which I love. I love the fact that the door locks are manual and windows are crank. I love all that stuff. It just works simple and you're not gonna be stuck out in the middle of nowhere because some stupid electrical thing quit working on you. Um, this is also, a old school truck in the way of uh, the other portion. So it's got no ABS on it. Um, it has a th proper throttle cable from the gas pedal. So it's no throttle by wire system. It's just old school Toyota reliability type stuff. So really like it. Let's go ahead and take a drive in it and see how it drives. All right, let's go ahead and start this up. This is a cold start on it. It hasn't uh, run for a day or so. Let's see if it starts. Of course it starts, it's Toyota. All right, <laughs> so let's go ahead and take it for a drive. We'll back out of here. All right, so once we get going here, let's, let's just talk about a few things in here. One is, this fridge. So one of the things you notice with this fridge is that it's in between the seats and that is purposeful because check this out. We can uh, lay back both of the seats on both sides, fully retract them back and uh, not interfere with this uh, cooler. So it's really nice because it doesn't lose any of the functionality that we have with the truck. It's also accessible from the inside here. So if you flip it up, you can see the inside of the fridge. It's a really nice unit. You can run it as a fridge or a freezer. It's 18 liters. And my wife and I, on the last trip, we were out for about a week at a time. And this provided enough cold storage for, you know, bringing along some luxury items like eggs and meat and all the good stuff. So it was really nice. And we didn't have to deal with ice. So super handy little fridge. And it's the right size for this type of truck super lightweight as well. Um, inside here, so we've got the shifter. One of the things that's amazing with this, I put a short shifter in it. So check out the shifter throw. This is the entire shifter throw range. It's a URD short shifter, and it makes the truck so much fun to drive. It, it's funny because it's, uh, it's like a sports car shifter in a truck. It's not exactly fast uh, as far as the truck speed goes, but it's, uh, it's so much fun. I love ironic things in life. The front, the front shifter is for the Marlin Crawler uh, transfer case. And so this will engage the 4.7 case. Um, you can run this case in two wheel drive, four wheel drive, four wheel drive low or four wheel drive high. So it gives you a lot of gearing options. So the stock rear transfer case is a 2.57 to one transfer case gear ratio. Now with that engaged by itself, you're gonna have about a 47 to one or so crawl ratio, which is basically the stock crawl ratio of all Toyota trucks for the most part. It's not exactly great, but it's adequate for a lot of things. Now if you engage just the 4.7 case and leave the stock case in high range, that gets you up to right around a 90 to one crawl ratio which is really good. That's a great crawl ratio for a lot of off-roading. Now, when you get into super technical rocks or you're climbing almost straight up cliff face type stuff, you're gonna want both these transfer cases in low. And that's gonna give you a 233 to one crawl ratio. I'll show you a short video of that. I've walked outside of the truck while it goes because it's so slow and it's just fun. Uh, with it in double low, you cannot stall the truck at all. So you're basically just using the clutch and the brake, no gas. And it also has uh, 
well, the brakes don't really work uh, because it's got so much torque from that crawl ratio. Uh, but it also goes so slow that when you're coming off a very technical obstacle, you're full control because you've got front and rear lockers engaged and it just will just creep off of the craziest stuff without lurching or jumping around or anything crazy. So the control that this thing has for crawling is phenomenal. It is amazing. It's, when you're out on a trail on a crazy rock obstacle, the ability to just creep over it with the most precision and ease of turning with the hydro assist and with the air lockers having massive traction, it's so much fun. You, when you drive it in situations like that, you really get what this truck is and what it is made for. Um, on road, obviously being solid axles and taller and all the stuff, heavier, you know, you lose a lot of the driving characteristics of a stock truck. It's not as, you know, light. It's not as fast. It's, it's, you know, not high speed cornering, you know, as good. Um, you know, so there's a lot of trade-offs with a bigger truck like this. But when you put it in its elements, out in the middle of nowhere, on some rocks, man, you just can't help but smile because it is so good. And this truck is built to be reliable, so it can get to you to those rocks no matter how far away they are. And we've done many long hauls in this truck. We're talking 12 to 20 hour drives straight in it. Um, and it is really good. It's super reliable. It's I find it pretty comfortable for an old truck. Um, it's not too noisy and uh, it's really good. Um, so let's go over a few other things in here. I'm going to turn on the air conditioning because it's hot out. Um, we've got the radio that is also Bluetooth, which is pretty nice. It's got a flip down face and the face pops off. Um, we use it because you can pair it to your phone and it makes it really nice. Um, we added this clock. Um, it's just a Toyota factory clock because uh, I like the Toyota factory clocks. Being a base model, it didn't have that. Uh, it's got the standard rear view mirror and just a couple full down Toyota style uh, sun visors. Um, you see the AFM gauge and the boost gauge over here. And you can see, it, you know, readings will change as you have different throttle input. Let's go ahead and drive this thing. Let's take a drive here. We'll test it out on the road. A little road drive in here. So, the uh, clutch was replaced with the Marlin Crawler clutch. It has a really good engagement on it. Uh, really easy clutch pedal feel, so it's it's easy to drive in town or on the trail. It doesn't wear out your foot, which is really nice. Um, this, this turning on this thing is really easy. I mean, you can watch, I mean, you could basically one finger turn it, and it's really easy to turn. Now, the, because it is a sole axle truck, and it also, is uh, you know, set up with hydraulic assist, it's not a fast turning rig, you know? So if you're gonna go, um, you know, with a typical car or something like that, they have a really fast turning ratio, you know, you go lock to lock and, uh, you know, two turns or two and a half turns each direction or whatnot. This, probably an extra one turn each direction, um, so it's, you know, if you're doing wanting a truck that does high speed desert racing and, you know, you can just zip around in the things and jump it and all that, that's not this truck. It, this truck is designed for trails and rock crawling and it's really good on road for a truck that's designed for that. So we're going to go ahead and take it out on the road here and see if we can get it up to 60 or so. Um, you can see I'm in third gear right now and we'll shift it and show you how great the shifter is on this thing. So it shifts through all the gears really well. There's no grinding or weird noises or anything like that. This thing um, doesn't have that many miles on it. And uh, it does have the red line uh, synthetic gear oil in the transmission as well. So as we drive, accelerate up to speed here, um, we'll go ahead and put in a little boost here because it's warmed up. So, Driving it up over 3,000 RPM and it's up to about 65 or so. So it's about, uh, it's about three pounds of boost on it. You can probably hear the supercharger whine just a little bit on it. Um, it's kind of a bumpy mountain road, so hope you're not bumping around too much there. 
But here we are in fifth gear. Um, fifth gear, it's really happy zone is right around 2,500 RPM. That puts you right about 70, 000, uh, 70 miles an hour. And that's typically where we try to cruise with it. And it gets right about 20 miles a gallon on road trips like that. So you can go over 300 miles on a tank uh, for range, which is pretty good. Um, and then on the trail, being a four cylinder, it's really fuel efficient. So we were on the Doozy Ursham Trail last year and we spent five days on the trail. Uh, we went with a pretty stock looking uh, Suzuki, so it was a slow go. Um, but we were on the trail for five days and we uh, did that on one tank of gas. So it's pretty awesome being able to be running the engine for eight to 10 hours a day and, and still be able to uh, not run out of fuel. So that, that part's really nice with a four cylinder. Um, you can see being a solid axle rig, it takes a little more steering input than a uh, IFS truck, but if you watch the steering wheel kind of going down the road, it tracks really well. You know, I mean, hands off, it's just kind of driving down the road. Um, it has, you know, a slight amount more steering uh, play than what uh, uh, a rack and pinion style IFS rig will have, but it's really not bad. This is probably one of the tightest steering trucks I've had or driven that's a solid axle truck. I mean it's comparable to our brand new F-250 truck. So really nice to drive on road because it, it's, I mean you can just one figure drive it down the highway, you know, 55, 60, 70, whatever. And it's, uh, it's pretty quiet. You don't really hear much road noise in it. Uh, I think the the one of the shifter boots, the rubber boots under here, is uh, is not as well sealed as it uh, could be. So if that was sealed up better, I think you'd have a lot less uh, you know road noise input for it. But it's really not bad. You can easily carry on a conversation here uh, while you cruise on a road trip. And for us, the truck has basically just been mostly stored or out on long trips. So it's rarely we'll drive it in town uh, just because we have several other cars to drive and a motorcycle and whatever. We just don't, we don't drive it around town very often. We'll start it up and run it, but that's about it. Uh, but when we take this out, we'll take it out for, you know, a thousand mile, 2,000 mile straight drive, you know, some place, go up to Oregon from Arizona or back or go to California. And then if we're out on a uh, trail like last year, we, we were out, you know, for a week on rock crawling trails, you know, so that was, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of time in the car, a lot of time in the seat. And this thing is a champ for that stuff. It's crazy reliable and it's just toy of simplicity. So really fun truck. Hope you enjoy this video. Sorry if it's a little long. And if you have any questions, feel free to mention it down below. Um, we are, we will post it for sale. So it is for sale if somebody wants to buy it, if it, you know it's the right buyer and uh, price and all that fun stuff. Um, certainly in no hurry to sell it, but next year we're planning on doing a lot of traveling. So it's probably gonna sit quite a bit. So that's why we're considering it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed watching it. Hit the like, subscribe if you enjoyed any of this stuff. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned. We'll be doing some upcoming videos with our new camper and uh, with some of our other projects we're working on with another truck and so forth. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.